imagine all life as you know it stopping instantaneously and every molecule in your body exploding at the speed of light. Total Protonic Reversal. Protonic Reversal. Protonic Reversal with your host, Conan Neutron. Broadcasting from a secret underground lair in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. A gigantic middle finger to everything that is rock about music, rock and roll, and corporate power. The thing is, though, if you don't laugh, you're going to go on a killing spree with sharp and nails. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Confidence of a hero or a fool, I wasn't exactly certain which. Could not be more professional. It's all That's like a science thing, right? Indeed, indeed, indeed it is. It is a science thing. It is a science place. It is a scientific fact that we are all up in your face. It is time for the one, the only, Protonic Reversal. Welcome to it, welcome to it, welcome to it. Sure, one more. Welcome to it. A 250th episode, seven, seven years. Seven years of, of doing this thing, and I am very pleased to welcome any first-time listeners to the show. As always, I'm gonna I'm trying to do this pre-roll thing here. Uh, I'm gonna this this may sound canned. I assure you, it's not. It's just me attempting to work my way through it. So, if it's your first time, go to New Transport Tonic Reversal is a long-winning podcast about music and musicians. This is episode two fifty. If this is your first time listening to the show, all the archives are at protonicreversal.com and are always free. No ads, no sponsors, no kidding. If you'd like to support the show or get episodes sooner, you can give $1 a month to patreon.com slash protonicreversal. If you like the show or even just a single episode, please feel free to share it along, like, subscribe, or post a review of it. All that helps people find the show, and it's just a darn nice thing to do. That still seems incredibly awkward to me. Uh, it's especially awkward if you don't know who the hell I am. You're only here for my fantastic, uh, not even guest, but interviewer. He, he's going to be, we're going to be switching things up, <laughs> uh, which is, of course, Mr. Uh, Jerry Casale. So he, he's going to be taking over the show for the evening, which is crazy and weird and surreal. But he's been on the show a few times himself. And in this case... He is now going to be the interviewer, and I will be the interviewee, which is uh, quite surreal for me. I think I described it as my imposter complex doing a red alert like the Starship Enterprise. <laughs> and here he is now, uh, Mr. Uh, Jerry Casale. Jerry, can you hear me? Now I can hear you. I, I gave a small amount of effort thinking that I could redo the theme song to be uh, Jerry Casale's Protonic Reversal, but ultimately I just did not have the... Uh, <laughs> the, the, the bandwidth, so to speak, to do that. So, but it's 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 a it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure to be seeing you. Pleasure to have you back. And this is really weird for me, but uh, yeah, we we <laughs> and, and it's important for me to mention this was your idea, and I think it's a great one. I just I hope other people agree as well. But I I, I would I, I'm going to defer the sh- the show is now yours, sir. The helm is yours. Well, of course, when when we. When we threw out that idea, the world was a different place. Is it okay if I share with the people what, what happened? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's fine. Go right ahead. Okay. I think it's very, uh, it's insanely brilliant to even be on now to be doing this. Um, his mother died in a tragic car accident a few days ago. Uh, completely dumb life taking over the way it does. Like the last episode of The Sopranos where it cuts to black. And uh, he's dealing with it. And it's uh, it's hard for me to even talk about it. Um, yeah. Your mother was only 67, right? 67? Yeah, far too young. And, and as, as I believe I said, her uh, her side of the family had a tendency to kind of live long. Just be, you know, that they would, you know, yeah. Living till were, you on, were you on good terms with your mother? I tried to be. It was a it was a complicated relationship. 
she okay. was a I had hippie parents. Okay. In, in all the sense of the term. So in the sense that I had access to all the cool records early on. Basically helped form my my taste. But there there were some less than less than good decisions made uh when when I was young. And she kind of lost her mind a little bit when her dad died. And it was a reg- regrettable thing for her. She, I forgave her for all that had happened and tried to give her the absolution that she needed. But I don't think she really could ever for- quite forgive herself. So yeah. what I said, I want to have an adult relationship with you. And all that is in the past and we can't change that. So since we can't change that, let's have an adult relationship now and we can, we can engage on those terms. Right. And uh, I mean, things, things did get better. We, we reestablished contact. Yeah. I, I will say that it, it clearly haunted her. And it was, and the thing that made that so infuriating to me is that there was nothing I was able to do about it. Like no, no matter, I wanted to give her absolution I believe she was did not feel right. that. Absolutely. And when was the last time? You- I, I I talked to her last week. <laughs> I mean, like it, it was right. That's yeah. I, to know. Sure, last sure. Yeah. Time you talk. It, it, it's it's, and I even you know did the thing I always do when people die and be like, oh, what was the last? What was the last conversation? What was the last? Uh, Thing that was said and, and it was fine it was it was all like i don't i don't regret any right. of it because i've had other people close to me like musical collaborators mm-hmm. go on mm-hmm. die but i this is my first parent i've lost and it hit me in some very i suppose it shouldn't be surprising ways yeah. <laughs> but uh it, it, it hit me it hit me hard and yeah, it just wasn't a, wasn't a call. I had to make a couple of calls. That it's I, always, it is it is all surprising. It, it, it's all surprising. You, it's oh. been, a, been a weird week. <laughs> I mean, that's but that's all. Was she was she with other people in the? No, it was. Uh, she she had one of these. She had one of these freaking uh, smart cars. These little like little death machines. <laughs> and. Yeah, I I don't know all the details of the accident, but she and uh, th- those things are not known for their sturdiness. Let's put it that way. <laughs> yeah, they're not so smart. Yeah, <laughs> the, the, the uh, smart is debatable, well, or maybe she. I, yeah, I'm pouring out exactly. I'm getting a um a band here that says your internet is unstable, which I don't know why because yesterday. I had two Zoom meetings that were completely fine, so I'm not sure what's going on here, and I'm sorry. Well, Can you hear me? It seems to be okay now. Yeah, it seems to be okay now. Okay. Well, I'm pouring out all the empathy that I can even have as a semi-robot person on the spectrum, because I just can't believe what happened to you. Um, and you <laughs> are you. incredibly strong to even be on the show right now <laughs> and it well, is 250 so i guess you have something that you felt compelled to live up to i think milestones are important and i think as someone that i've chosen to define myself by what i do uh, and my actions i think it's important to observe those things and don't get me wrong, the thought of just, you know, saying like, hey, let's forget about this. Let's not yeah. do it. Uh, that, that certainly not only came to mind. It was like, well, I don't know. And, and then, then I just, I thought about the fact that like, okay, why do I define myself by what it is that I do? Why is this show about why do you do what you do? Well, part of the reasons is that, I mean, if you go back to, I feel like I should be laying down at the shrink's office, right? But uh, <laughs> My mother, she was deprived of approval from. Well, yeah, this is a this is a masked masks off moment. Yeah, I, I, so mm-hmm. my mom was always very supportive of what I did, but she was supportive in a way that was was like, it's not that the content didn't matter, 
but uh, she almost overcompensated for what her mom did for her, uh, which is to say deprive any kind of approval at all because it wasn't the correct path. And having had a lot of time to reflect this week, I thought about the fact that, you know, she yeah. always was a big booster about- Yeah, Karen over corrects for what to them. <laughs> it goes back and forth and it's, it's a, uh, it's a give and take, right? You have you have the uh, the, the Alex P. Keatons and you have the uh, <laughs> Michael Gross. There we go. Um, yeah, and, and it, which isn't to say that I turned out to be like you know conservative necessarily, <laughs> but like uh, it just for me, punk rock was so well. And finding you know, and, not, and by punk rock, I mean finding out about you know bands like yourself and like you know Captain Beefheart and and things like that too. Of just like, oh no, you can push the boundaries of what it is to do something. But it isn't defined by this par cultural paradigm that doesn't speak to you. Uh, meaning that, like, I had nothing against, uh, you know, right. I, I, I mean, I, I listened to plenty of Neil Young this week, uh, which is one of my mom's favorites. And I, I have, I listen to a lot of that music now, but it wasn't my music. It wasn't music that, like, found me and kind of shook me by the lapels and said like, Hey, pay attention to this. You always say that like, I don't have a lot of rebellion. Right. Like it wasn't rebellious for me to go take drugs. My parents were doing that. I had hippie parents. I got to see everything but heroin done in front of me by the time I was 12 years old. Right. Uh, but you know, my act of rebellion is to kind of create order from chaos. Cause that's what I had to do. Actually what you're doing right now is you're, Probably answering the first. I'm, I'm saying I'm, I'm going to pour myself a little bit of my okay. last 50 by 50. Protonic reversal by okay. 50. <laughs> ah. <laughs> uh, what do you have, the Pinot Noir? I do. It's, it's, my, it's the last bottle, and I figure if there's effort and opportunity. The Pinot Noir? It. Yeah, okay. Okay. <laughs> well, it, I have to say it is good. Even if I have to blow my own horn here, it is good. But you were answering the first question that I didn't even ask you. <laughs> I'm, sorry, was, I'm, I'm happy you did that. Because I was going to say, Conan, I was going to say, what set you on your path? Because before, um, you know, the last time we spoke, you were interviewing me. And I didn't know much about you, I'll be honest. And then I went and found out about you. And I went, oh, my God, okay, this guy, you know, he took the red pill a long time ago and he's got this storied group of musician friends and he's done all this work and he's definitely uh, socially consciousness uh, oriented and politically active and, uh, you know, confrontational in his music. And I was very impressed with the whole thing. And I thought, what's him on this path? And you've been answering that. <laughs> you started right in on it, yeah. <laughs> and it totally makes sense because we all have that story. Yeah, my I, parents were blue collar authoritarian, so I said "fuck you" to everything. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, and it, it, it's wild that I don't think there's a ton of I don't think there's a ton of people that have kind of my story, which is it wasn't like there was anything really to rebel against with my parents, other than the fact that you know. No. <laughs> I'll catch up with this delicately. Uh, you know, the, the rebellion. rebellion. Was, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I probably could have, feel, you know, field dressed and assembled a bong or something by the time I was eight. You know, <laughs> you know like, <laughs> I distinctly remember, uh, you know, this, this is, this is, uh, <laughs> right. I remember having to separate the, 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 the weed, the, the stems and the seeds. Uh, I remember my mom put me on that task because I had I had small hands and I thought it looked like fun. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so there you that was so that was my. It was challenge. definitely the great pot that was going on back when. It was a lot of work. A lot of work. yeah. <laughs> you'd smoke a whole joint and then you'd turn to your friends and go, "Do you feel anything? Do you feel anything?" <laughs> I think it was nutmeg. Yeah. <laughs> But it's not that way now. No, today it's not your mama's pot. It's no. uh, high tech, hydroponic, really intense. Teenagers are definitely are. They're getting addicted. Yeah. 
You're getting addicted because it's so strong. Well, and it's nobody wants to hear that. But it's, you know, your brain isn't completely formed. The frontal lobes, frontal lobes of your brain isn't completely formed until 25. Yeah. So all these 17 year olds that are smoking like hydroponic sativa and vaping it, they are really mutating themselves. They really are. <clears throat> you don't you don't want to say too much about it because you don't want to be put onto the the uh, the 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 side that is for prohibition and. <laughs> You know, but, but it's like, oh, there is maybe oh. some kernel of a point to some of that. Yeah, you know. No, I'm never for quote. I'm never, I'm never for prohibition. Never. I think people should have the right to fuck themselves up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but it, but it is. It's also like it acknowledges the risk, and of course, this country is so backwards in, ter- in terms of. Uh, educating people about what drugs even are let alone like you know the the real life ramifications for it i mean it's 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 no wonder it's like sex education don't get me started on that right a sort the of problem that. with the whole culture that especially when when i was growing up things were bad they didn't they didn't look at sex as an art they didn't look at drugs as part of almost a religious ritual of creativity it was just bad so yeah. You think sex is like, you know, eating junk food and you think doing drugs is like going to hell. So you you miss the whole benefit of the level of life, the spirit of life that you could be living because they ruin the meaning of these really powerful things like sex and drugs. Right. Exactly. Just just by putting in the uh, the the good or bad column. Like, I I think I made a. uh... Well, it was to something else, but I, I made a terrible slash hilarious and awesome movie, Zardos, starring uh, Sean Connery from the 80s, that had this gigantic head that floated down. What? Was like, the gun is good. The gun. Penis is, is bad. Good. Penis is bad. Yeah, exactly. I love it. <laughs> Weird movie. And like, still. Remember what Zardos says? It says, the gun is good, the penis is bad. Yep. <laughs> I think if it if it had just been uh, the opening, yeah, well, well Sean Connery, the ponytail. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. That's yes. Here's my next question. Okay, great. You probably won't answer. Okay. Oh, I was born a Conan. So I was born a Conan, but I chose to become a Neutron. Is, is how I say it. When they named but, you Conan. They named me. They sure did. <laughs> I was named after Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. Uh, when I started writing for zines, fanzines, uh, in, in, uh, when I was uh, in high school, uh, is when I decided yeah. that I wanted to be, I wanted to have my own punk rock. Like, Iggy Pop wasn't named Iggy Pop when he it was James Osterberg, right? And like, who's, who's going to go see James Osterberg and the Stooges, you know? <laughs> right, right. But he became Iggy Iguana. And I was like, oh, that's cool. All right. And w- w- without enabling any stalkers, my, my government name, <laughs> is not that far off from Neutron. But uh, yeah, I, I was born a Conan and I, I chose to become a Neutron. Got it. Well, it's such a good name. And I, I was assuming that it was an acquired, like, alter ego or persona the way, you know, I was, I, in college, I was Gorge. Then in graduate school, I was Protar. And then, you know, I mean, we all did those things. Uh, and certainly the punk movement was was full of people who had assumed names, like, you know, all really good ones, too. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and that I found I took a lot of inspiration from that because part of the thing that made me so enraptured with the world of punk rock was the idea of being able to define yourself and to be able to find your own identity, not through yeah, habits. Creating, creating a new identity. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And, you know, it's, right. it's I, exactly. not to put you fine upon it, but the work no, you guys did. To do it. These dudes came from Ohio. <laughs> you know, and it, it's like, oh, wow, really? Like, they seem like they're from outer space. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, how about that? <laughs> so the fact that I came from this crappy Central Valley yeah. town full of, like, casual racism and sexism, sort of like, well, that doesn't need to be who you are. Right. Right. 
And clearly you, uh, you set yourself on a path early on, like you had some kind of revelation like most creative kids do. They, they see things and they keep them in mind and they understand. So they have a concept. And obviously you did that early on. When did you first pick up a guitar? Oh gosh, I guess it was about 15. Uh, and this, it, it sounds like a made up story, but it's, it's 100% the truth that I was just sitting, sitting in my chair reading uh, either a comic book or a, you know, Stephen King book, you know, something along those lines. And my best friend in the world, Clay, comes to the door. He's got a bass strapped around oh. his neck. And he says, I just bought this bass. You need to buy a guitar so we can be a band. And I said, okay. <laughs> I put the book down <laughs> and I asked my grandma to take me to the store to buy a guitar. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, what, what, is there anything more, more simple than that? Like, yeah, I, mean, I like I, that. Yeah, so uh, we, if that was in a movie. <laughs> seems scripted, right? But I, it was exactly. Well, if that scene was a movie, the whole audience would laugh. Yeah, of course, absolutely. And, and it's yeah. it, it, in, in the movie, yeah. there would probably be more talent. You, you did that. I did that. And, and there was not, I wasn't any good at it for, you know, like, as you can imagine, uh, for a pretty long amount of time. And the guy, Clay, who is my best friend, he's also who I moved out to the Bay Area with. If, if anybody okay. in my high school had known what the term gestalt entity meant, they probably would have applied it to us because they basically thought of us as like one unit. We were in. <laughs> uh -huh. And we made comic books. We had this public access uh -huh. show. We just were using any resources we had, which were almost none, to escape the mundane, mediocre misery of, of living in, you know, a, a nondescript American town that is trying to reject you like a virus the entire time. So yeah. you guys were conceptually and creatively bonded, collaborated. We would put together album concepts and album titles, what logos should look like, all of that without any play, lick of music. Let's, let's be clear about that. That, that was a <laughs> very much a lower priority item for us. But yeah, we, we were, the, the way it was for us, and I realized this as an adult. Oh, I, I respect that. I, the, the way it was is, is that we were trying to create an escape. And, and I feel like maybe that's, that's different for kids now because they have the internet, they have social media. You can, it's just different, but we, we needed to create a haven away from the dudes in trucks yelling homo from, uh, or worse from, uh, <laughs> uh, while they're shirtless in the back, maybe while you're on a date with someone, yeah. which is like, Hmm. I'm sorry. So you're, you're the dudes that are shirtless in the back of a truck together. But fine. Okay. Well, I, mean, I think that story. You, yeah. I mean, your story is my story, the same as 10,000 musicians and artists stories. Uh, it's exactly what happens. And you do have to create an alternate world and a haven uh, to, to um, thrive, to protect your creativity. And I'm all for starting with ideas and then making music to live up to those ideas. That makes sense to me. You know. That, that, that's, that's not that far off. I think from I have an idea, personally. I have that bias. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. When, when I did a little, you know, not that I'm Mr. Research or anything, but when I did some digging on you, I see that's what you did. And then you released your first Conan... Neutron with uh, Secret Friends um, in 2017, right? Was it? I thought it was. A, I thought it was uh, 20. Maybe it was a little earlier. That that might be right. It's it's been the first record under Kona Neutron, the Secret Friends. I thought that was 2015, but maybe I'm maybe I'm wrong. It hasn't it hasn't been that long. But that that's been the yeah, not oh. my first band, but the best one and the one that's most fully realized as an artistic entity. And it's funny you mentioned that because Clay, the fellow I mentioned who got me on my path, who in fact did not continue on that path and had a early end as well, uh, way too early. 
he uh, he's on the cover. The cover wow. is promo photos. Wow. We did promo photos, promo photos in high school. Oh, of- that's 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 the person you dedicated it to because he only lived to twenty seven or something, right? Yeah, yeah. He he and he never got to be on never got to be in an album cover. So he he finally got to be in an album album cover, even though it was recorded. I don't know, th- uh, month, two months yeah. after he died. But wow. you know, 2015, that record was called The Enemy of Everyone. So that was the first Secret Friends record. Uh, and that was sort of, so that was interesting because I used to play in a band called Replicator that I actually feel like of all the bands I played with kind of owed the most to Devo. <laughs> uh, but I, just in the fact that conceptually it was all, you know, <laughs> dystopia, uh, techno- man versus technology, you know, these big heady concepts, but uh, the, the music, you wouldn't necessarily know that unless you're like, oh, wait, that's, that's messed up. Okay. And mm-hmm. I did that for most of my 20s. That was, that was uh, not with Clay. Mm-hmm. That, that, was, that was later on. You know, we got in right before the world changed completely. So we got to tour and, and you know, make records. And then that like, People would buy a CD because they might never see you again. They couldn't just go to Spotify and, you know, heart the, <laughs> heart the name of the band, right. look on YouTube or something. So I, I got in on the very tail end right. of that. Got, got into the yeah. party before it was over, I guess, is the, the best way to put it. <laughs> when, music, when music still had some value, right. um, rather than just be... Uh, a throwaway that's supposed to be free. Which is a shame because with the Kona Neutron, the Secret Friends stuff, it's certainly the most fully fully realized of anything I've done, just in form and function. And mm-hmm. right. is and then the people that are into it are into it, and that's great, but it's sort of everything's just a subsection, a subsection of a subsection. You know, here here's here's your shoebox to play in rather than like a you know, your, your, your house or something or your arena. It's just, and that's fine because it's for the people that it's for. A lot of people don't realize this is something that I put together to kind of keep my mind occupied and keep myself working in the community when I'm not doing that. And of course with COVID, nobody was doing anything. So I just stepped up what I was doing here for my own sanity as much as anyone else. Ultimately I'm a musician. Right. First, I mean, I don't know if anybody anything first, but I, I'm a musician just as much as I'm a, you know, podcast guy, or, <laughs> or whatever, <laughs> whatever the phrase would be. Uh, well, so because of COVID, you stepped up the podcast because it's one thing we could still do when we we're isolated. Absolutely, <clears throat> and that's so. How many podcasts did you do since COVID? Uh, Closed it down. How many podcasts since like March of 2020? That's a great question. And I think it is, I think it was at 147 was the first one in the COVID era to, this is now 250. So uh, yeah, 100, 103, 103 podcasts, usually between an hour and a half to two hours long. Jesus. Yeah. It sounds, sounds, yeah. <laughs> well, and at least, um, See one, two, three, four. At least five of those hours are with you, not counting. So you were doing you were doing like twice a week, and twice a week. Yeah. I, I, well, so and I feel like <laughs> so twice. Like a week. I, yeah. It, at one point, five times a week because at the beginning of COVID, well, of course we like everyone else, we canceled our you know meager little tour dates for the, the, the tour we were doing can't do anything else. I also got laid right. off a job at the same time. So it's pretty much just me staring at a wall. <laughs> you know, what's the <laughs> stare at each other and wait till we die. Is that the, the Steve Albini <laughs> quote yeah. from big. <laughs> yeah. And so I was like, well, what can I do? Right. And what I can do is, is, is this. Wait, the sure. the yeah. surprising thing about all of it to me, surprising to me is that uh, it wasn't just uh, like, like I likened it to after the shipwreck, there's like a piece of wreckage that you can, you know, attach yourself to and, and, and float in the ocean with. It's kind of been that way for other people as well. And that's amazing. And I, I 
I'm incredibly humbled by that, yeah. that, you know, I, 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 under, you know, I feel that it's worth listening to. Of course I do. Huh. <laughs> but <laughs> the, the fact that others get something out of it in a really hard time for humanity, <laughs> you know, that's, that, that's amazing. And that's, I, I don't take that for granted at all. Right. Well, I mean, if you didn't think it was worth listening to, that would be terrible. Right. <laughs> You know, you've got to believe it. Yes, right. The artist has to believe what he's doing. I mean, it's like, that was the next question. Uh, you know, isn't it strange that we decided early on that we just had to get up on stage in front of people? <laughs> it is. It, it's a, if you stop and, like, analyze it, it's bizarre. <laughs> that's, a biz- that's a crazy thing. <laughs> isn't it? It's like, what? What's the, what nerve, right? What nerve? Like, uh, every, hey, everybody, I'm up here and you're going to pay attention to me, you know? Right. <laughs> and it's, I, you know, definitely, yeah, I started off pugnacious and that never really stopped. I just kind of channeled it differently. There was definitely, a, I'm going to play right through you kind of, kind of mindset. And I don't know. Like, I think there's something to that. Some yeah. of my favorite had that intensity of, yeah. of just, Oh no! This is hold the phone. Something's happening here, and uh, you know, I'm not saying that I've anything I've done is yeah. rep- nothing that way. But like that's what I've admired. And whatever the, the type of band, it, it doesn't matter. But just that 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 oh no, we're not here with the acoustic guitar playing the uh, <laughs> the heartfelt ballads and just having a good time. This is war. <laughs> I mean, it could be fun, too, but it's more. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it certainly is. I mean, if you think about it, all the stuff that you ended up liking the most and the stuff that became the most significant in the history of music pissed people off at first. Yeah. It was very hard for these artists to get an audience in the beginning. They were laughed at. They were threatened. They were ignored because they were doing something that nobody even knew they wanted to hear it yet. Yep. Well, pioneers that got scalped, right? Yeah. What's the first record that you that you released with with the uh, drummer from the Melvins? Oh, uh, so that was so Kona Nutra and the Secret Friends. That's that was uh, the Enemy of Everyone, and that's the one that has Clay on the cover. And that was uh, that was interesting because it was the first one that I. Okay. Like my old band, they were kind of getting more into writing stuff in the room. And at the same time, I was getting better at like making demos that weren't totally ridiculous and terrible. So we were sort of moving in opposite directions. And I just kept seeing my friends doing mm-hmm. uh, uh, friends in peer bands and, and whatever, just doing awesome work and like just really becoming their best selves. And, and I just think to myself, God, I'm not doing anything right now. And this sucks. And so I had the idea of, well, what if I tried to make my make a record myself based on songs that I wrote? I've been writing these songs, and they they seem to be okay. So I talked to Toshi Kasai, uh, who's a producer and a friend that that we had worked with in my previous band, and right. I sent him the songs and I said, "Hey, first of all, are these any good?" <laughs> and secondly, would you want, if so, do you want to make a record with me? And he says, yeah, you know, these, these are really great. I'd, I'd like to do it. He didn't say really great, but he said, he's like, yeah, they're, you know, I, I'm into it. Let's do it. I had kind of, I know a lot of people from just being around and, and tour and stuff. And I certainly could have picked Mouse from VNA or Chris from Replicator. Like, there's so many drummers that I, are so talented that I could like, pick with. But when you're, when you're in a rock and roll band, if you're any kind of, add whatever the adjective in front of it or qualifier, uh, you're as good as your drummer, I feel. So I made a list. I made a long list uh, <laughs> of all my favorite drummers. And my, my theory was what I would do is I would go through and as everybody said no, I would just go down the list. So go one, two, three, et cetera, et cetera. And hopefully one of them would eventually say yes. <laughs> Which I feel like is a good plan. Like I was, I was, I was being very methodical and robotic about it, right? Like I was sort of like, well, you know, of course, it, it's, I wouldn't, I won't take it as an indictment. I'll just ask, and then when they say no, not a big deal. First one on the list, Dale Crover. And I, I, you know, 
uh, we had been friendly over the years. I had seen Melvin's many times over. I'd seen him play in other bands and we knew each other enough, but weren't like, good. Mm -hmm. but I asked him and he was like, he was like, yeah, you know, sounds great. Let's do it. And what really? Oh, okay. So like, (laughs) so my first round draft pick was (laughs) said yes. And I'm like, Oh, okay. So that's real now. And then I thought to myself, well, okay, same deal with bass. It's so important. And I thought back to Tony Ash, who he played in a band called Trophy Wives, and we used to tour with them a lot. They were label mates of ours. And just the coolest guy. Like, the dichotomy between just being, like, you know, sweet, awesome, chill guy, but then just one of the most powerful rock bass players just digs in. I was like, oh, it's... T-. And, and just a guy that I loved hanging out with. Like, he's someone that I, I feel like hanging out with Tony makes me be my best self because it's it, it's like, oh, he's so you know awesome and hilarious and intelligent and so on and so on. So I ask him, you know, hey, I've got this idea. I'm going to make this record. Would you want to do it? He immediately says yes. I'm like, okay, great. Dale Crover from the Melvins is playing drums. Make sure you practice. Talk to you later. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> which, which, again, it seems like that, the, the same movie. Uh-huh. Right? All right. <laughs> the same movie from earlier. But, uh, yeah. And, and it worked. And so then we... That, that was the first record. Then we, I kind of got a feel for how to do it. And what I found is that a lot of things that I was, that I had in my mind from making earlier records, like I was second guessing myself a lot. First instinct is usually best with me. And I should stick with that. When in doubt, take it out. You know, see small like little lessons where I'm like, oh, wow, I was, I was kind of making things really hard for myself. And really this was, like this is this is good. Yeah, I've got a good starting position for all of this. Like, and 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 so, you know, in a way, at the age of like I don't know, thirty six, thirty seven, whenever I did that record, it's sort of like everything was new again. I was like, I was, you know, fifteen, and Clay just came to the door with his face slung around his, his shoulder, and everything was exciting again. And and it we've never really stopped, and it's it's it still is. What kind of guitar were you using? So I have a yeah. Uh, so certainly not the first guitar I bought, which is a piece of crap. But I have a a, a custom electrical guitar company, Jagmaster, that's based off of the three hundred dollar guitar I played in Replicator that I I took all around this great country of ours many times over, rotting out every piece of it, having every piece of it having to be replaced at some point mm-hmm. or another. And it's it's based on that three hundred dollar guitar, and the guy Kevin he doesn't do customs anymore. But uh, I told him the story of why I wanted to be that one. He loved everything about it, and he made me he made me my uh, Excalibur, if you will. Like it, it's 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 my perfect guitar, and I'm that's not something I take lightly either. And you must use some pretty heavy gauge strings because because you're you some of these riffs you play, you're fond of like bending the bottom notes so that it's kind of a, a twisted contorted sound and it's affected and the the, the the gauge of the strings must be heavy are they yeah. yes they are they, they <laughs> that's that and that is such an awesome musician thing to recognize but yeah i have to, i have to have bare minimum 11s usually 12s and, and that's the sound that's the sound of that band is is is, is um okay all right which it i i just like <laughs> contorted yeah. good yeah. too. I'm glad that as well because it's like there's a lot of music that's that's quote unquote heavy, but to me it sounds very safe. And even though they're conventional rock songs more or less, in the fact that they're you know, a verse, there's a chorus, there's a, you know bridge sometimes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, I always try to have something in each song that's a little weird, like a little strange, a little Devo, if you will. Well, it's it's there. It's it's got heaviness, but it's not. It's not wooden. It isn't like soulless heavy. It's like snaky and yeah. kind of dirty. There's almost like something like some of it sounds like old Cajun music, but that's been oh wow uh, made contemporary with effects and with a big drum beat. <laughs> that's great. Oh wow, that's that's I love that. That's awesome, and that, that's obviously high praise from someone that uh, makes some pretty 
catchy yet deceptively heavy music in, ma in many ways himself. But I like the sound. I like the sound of your guitar. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. That, that's, that's, wow. Okay, so th this, is, this is a horrible week, but it is now a good week also. It's a huge compliment. I appreciate that. Also, it's not like you you know from good guitar. <laughs> Sorry, I, I gotta stop. I gotta stop doing. It. I gotta stop trying to turn it around. My bad. <laughs> yeah, but now, now, now that um, it looks like for real that the uh, masks are coming off. What's next for uh, Conan and his band? Yeah, well, that's a good question. And first of all, since you mentioned masks, I'm going to, and this is not going to work for people that are listening to audio, but I am wearing my uh, science doesn't care what you believe t-shirt. And that goes out to all the anti-mask folks out there. Uh, <laughs> just, had to, just, just had to get that dig in there before we, <laughs> well, I could. Uh, because it's true. Science doesn't care what you believe. Uh, the That's a good question. So I've... That's right. We have big plans for 2020. I, I, I almost feel like there's a certain segment of people that just don't either. They don't believe it's it's real. They don't believe it's it's uh, as as big of a deal as it is. And, and they're just they're screwing up for everyone else. So so full disclosure, I not only I've been fully vaccinated. You know, I, I'm I definitely an advocate for it. I'm an advocate for it, if nothing else, because I don't trust the rest of humanity to act in a responsible manner. That's why. I want to continue to do things. I don't. That makes you smart. Yeah, I mean, I would think, I would hope so, right? I mean, that's, and I don't think that that's, that shouldn't be a daring political opinion either. I don't, I, I don't feel, but okay, it is. So uh, most of the people that, uh, that play, in the band feel the feel same way. And so, you know, at what point do you say, okay, we're going to go try to do stuff and not have it be a super spreader. I think everyone's kind of waiting for someone else to take the first move there, but then you keep seeing like, you know, there was acts that I won't name that were doing shows the whole time or, you know, or, or just engaging in risky behavior. The other side of it is that I think a lot of, liberal orthodoxy is being the best at following the rules. <laughs> and I think that that's, that's a problem as well. Like, it's not like you should be in quarantine for forever either. And so, so there's going to be some new stuff. I will say that uh, Dale, Tony and I have all been vaxxed. We actually did record some new stuff and I'm very, I'm very excited. I'm, I was excited to be doing literally anything other than talking to this microphone at whoever's on the freaking show this week. But I, we're really, we're really happy with the results. And that's going to be, there's like a few EPs uh, coming out of that. A really cool high concept thing that I don't think I can talk about now. And I think three songs that are going to be in the next record, which is hilarious because the last record just came out in fall, but we recorded that in January of 2010, uh, 2019, not 2010. So as much as I stand by that one, you know, it, uh, we wrote a bunch of songs. You know, I, I, it's, I will say that while we're on that topic, while I stepped up uh, Protonic production, it's not like I'm working at the podcast factory when I say that, but you know what I mean. Uh, in March of 2020, I, I couldn't yeah. for a while. I was actually too angry. I, I was too angry, not just at the situation that we're in. I was angry at being uh, about how I was how it all went down with me, like losing my day job. It, it completely makes sense from a facts and figures standpoint. Uh, but it was, you know, it was scary. It was looking down the barrel of a gun financially while at the same time, can't even go on tour. Can't even do that, which, you know, it's not like that's paying the rent, but it certainly, uh, you know, makes enough to pay for itself and then some usually. And, I was just furious. And a lot of people would be like, Oh, there's going to be so much great music that comes out of COVID. All right, if you think so. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> I was too stressed. But here's and I what you have. You have a history. You have this name. Some people would call it a brand. Uh, you have new songs. You, uh, you, you are very articulate. You're well-connected. 
I think you could take steps now to get on the bill of a lot of these festivals that are going to happen in late summer, early fall, August, September. You get yeah. yourself on some of these bills. Get out there. I mean, you know when I went to Riot Fest, Jerry? <laughs> Uh, well, I, I guess I do now since we're playing it. Yeah. I was going to uh, say, you're playing it. I aren't certainly. You? <laughs> yeah, I can talk to the promoter. <laughs> uh, I, I'm glad you guys are doing that, by the way. And I think that's about the, like, I feel like, like about August and after, I feel like that's, you, you can do it safely. You're never, things are never going to be 100% safe. I mean, let's be real. Shows were not 100% safe before, but but it's never going to be like there's there's a time that you just got to you got to leave the airlock. Well, if you're, if you're vaccinated, it, you're not you're you're unlikely like one in a million to get anything. Yeah, exactly. And, and that's if people are taking those precautions. You know, is, is it make everybody bulletproof? No, of course it doesn't. And, and I got to say, like, with wearing the mask, I don't know about yourself, I didn't even get a cold <laughs> this last year. And I was like, that's great. I know. I know. Well, no one got the flu this year. The flu was almost non-existent. I, I, I love that. I mean, that's... that's Because everybody is wearing masks. <laughs> when, when I took the first shot of the, of the vaccine, my only side effect is I got 12 hours deep uninterrupted sleep. And like what I said is like, uh -huh. if that's the side effect, sign me up for every week. This is great. Uh, second one was way more. Yeah, really? But yeah. uh, but in that same way, if the side effect of having to wear masks is, you know, okay, well, you walk into a place and people don't know if they're if you're going to rob it or not. Well, great. That's okay by me. Everyone's. <laughs> <laughs> I know masks used to be uh, only worn by uh, thieves and monsters. And right. <laughs> now it's turned around. Exactly. <laughs> well, my favorite is is uh, in cold climates. So here in Wisconsin, seeing people without masks on when it was winter, it's like, okay, you're just making a point to be an asshole at this point because it's already cold. Right. You know, it's so cold, your nostrils will freeze, right. and you're choosing not to wear a mask because you're making a statement. And that statement is, you're a fucking idiot. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Yeah, well, you know, there's plenty of them as we <laughs> Yeah, you know. absolutely. There's I mean, more and more. I, I, so, so I guess, but getting back to me, no, I think uh, the, yeah, <laughs> as a live band, you know, bringing it to the people, that's, that, that gives me a lot of joy and people seem to respond well to it. We had some huge things planned in 2020 and well, like, Everything else, it all went up in flames, like with everyone else's plans. But I think you, I think yeah. it comes. You have to pick up the pieces, right? I mean, well, to be obstructed from doing what you love is really debilitating. And we like being on stage, and we like playing the songs, right? Absolutely. And that's what I'm saying. Go do it. <sighs> yeah. I think nobody wants to be nobody wants to be the first one. I think is what it is. Like, uh, like I noticed. Uh, a, a few tours starting to show up on the uh, uh, on the dockets and being like, okay, and they were sort of like waiting to see, like, oh, are they going to get, you know, somebody going to bitch them out for that or something, you know? Okay, well, you know, someone's already always going to have a problem no. with something. Like, no, there's a ton of shows right now that are scheduled for September, a ton yeah. of them, and I think Big that's ones. right. I think I think that's I think that's again, I feel like there are people that are very that are very very smart and very well-meaning that also want to be the best at following the rules too and make sure that everyone else is following the rules also and that's i don't know if that's indicative of our well, time or about caring about other humans or 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 what but it becomes everyone becomes a hall monitor at some point I, I, you notice that the rules kept changing right yeah that's what truly smart people know that the rules are never the rules uh, yeah they keep changing and, and it's stupid to follow rules that no longer make sense. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, and like, re remember when everybody thought it was, uh, you know, okay, oh, you have to make sure that you wash your hands for at least 45 seconds, like after like touching anything that has been anywhere. And then right. I was like, well, 
Uh, actually, maybe that was a little well, overblown. They dropped that. One. They dropped that. Yeah, <laughs> right. they dropped that. I know. The, I, and, and, and I don't know. Like, I, like, at what point do you do you say, okay, enough's enough? Like, you know, we're, we're not meant to be like sitting here in, like in Carbonite, like in Star Wars, where uh, Harrison Ford's character is is in the. <laughs> It's in the it's in the queue being stored for for transport. No, it's ridiculous. Yeah, look, I mean, if you're if you're really paranoid, wear a mask, but don't start busting other people. You know. Well, and that that's maybe one of the only things that can't believe I'm going to say this, but it's maybe one of the only things that the American right has a good point with, which is that a lot of us really love telling other people what to do. <laughs> Yeah. They're not wrong, you know. It's sort of like that. That that again. I call it big hall monitor energy. Hey, you can't run in the hall. Yeah. <laughs> what? Stop that! <laughs> Fuck you, man. Do what I want. <laughs> and yeah. then, but as I say, I'm not, and I'm try, not trying to make a mockery of the pandemic or anyone's quarantine. But it's just if there's one thing I, I've noticed with talking to so many people about this you know, especially during this weird time is it's actually been in some ways a very unifying event and that everyone's dealing with the same BS. And there was so much uncertainty about literally everything for so long. And then right. it's like, okay, now we have some answers and we disagree about some of the solutions, but we at least have an agreed upon set of questions. Now, if we can just get to an agreed upon set yeah. of facts, it would be great, but... <laughs> <laughs> well, the That's real it. reason to be angry is it didn't even need to happen. It it should have yeah. never happened. Well, you know, Bin, La Bin Laden determined to attack America. There's a long history of that, right? I mean, yeah, they were warned. Yeah. They were warned. In fact, uh, Chucklefuck himself said something along you know lines of like, "Oh no, you know, don't say anything about that. That's going to be terrible for for the upcoming campaign." I was like, oh, "Okay, well." How'd that work out? Yeah. And they that's were both eating logs. They were both authoritarian. They were both in denial. Yeah. They were both trying to maintain control over information. But in liberal love George W. Bush now. Now he's great. Oh, well, he said bad things about yeah. Trump. Fuck, wait. Really? Same, the Project for a New American yeah. Century? This is the guy you're, you're okay, all right, all right. I know. Uh, how soon they forget. <laughs> Everyone's waiting for a hero, and that hero is now Liz Cheney, apparently. Like, really? The super uh, bellicose <laughs> Pinak Jr.? She's an ultra-right wing. She's ultra-right wing ideologue. She wants to make abortion illegal and yeah. many other things. Uh, She's right about Trump. So, yeah. Right. Good for her. Give her a lollipop. Move on. I mean, like... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like two monsters that don't like each other. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. This is this is a like Mecha King Ghidra versus a Mecha Godzilla. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I just I just wanted to be as bloody as possible. Go. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> well, again, Conan, and I um I I salute you for getting through this hour and being able to do that. And I and I have a feeling that if you know. In the cornball world where we think about people in heaven and they're still, their consciousness is still there and all that stuff, I think your mom would actually be proud right now that you went ahead and did this. That's what I think. Well, I appreciate that. And it's, it's a weird week, man. And it, it's, I, I, I don't know what else to say. Like, it's I, ducks. Oh, I, I think shock hasn't even set in yet. It's going to get bigger. Yeah. And what? But I don't want to need some more fifty by fifty. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna, I was going to say it. I'm down to my last bottle. Tonight's Protonic Universal brought to you by fifty. Oops. Let's get the label. <laughs> fifty by fifty. This is uh, the twenty. The yeah, twenty seventeen. Need some more. Of that. Oh yeah, you better, better believe it. <laughs> I, I, I got a. This this is maybe too much information, but I, I was um, <laughs> I was watching a, a a Korean revenge movie. 
revenge movie? Sure. Sympathy for Lady Vengeance. Um, same guy did Old Boy, if you know that one. Uh, anyway, yeah. I, 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 I was <laughs> I was deep in into that. Uh, and maybe mm, one quarter in the bag, not necessarily half in the bag, but certainly on my way to the bag. Uh, when I, when I got the news, and let me tell you this: don't recommend it. Don't recommend that. Which is to say that you know, no one, no one ever expects something like that. But it's certainly not when a uh, when a, a prisoner is ex ex prisoner is going on an elaborate revenge fantasy, and you get like annoyed that your that your movie just got interrupted. And uh, to have that kind of, but it puts everything in perspective. I don't even know what I'm saying, but yeah. <sighs> Sympathy for Lady Vengeance, great movie. Permanently marred by the new I got now, but Jerry, this, thank, thanks for doing it. Well, I, 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 again, I, I can't emphasize this enough. You suggested it, and I think it's it's you. And <laughs> like, like I, 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 you know. When something like that happens, I always get sort of the, uh, the the Star Trek red alert warning of just imposter complex of saying, you know, hey, who who do you think you are to even suggest something like that? But I, I, I was racking my brain over an interesting way to celebrate seven years of this nonsense and 250 episodes of yes. it's not the Library of Congress, but it's something and it's something that some people get something yeah. out. So, I mean, it's I. I I, I th and I thank you for suggesting it and, and doing it. And <laughs> I'm sorry, our connection wasn't better. We could we can try it again sometime with a better connection. And uh, and I I, I admire your perseverance through all this hardship. I really do. Well, I thank you for that. And it, it's you know it's it's not like the work is everything but the work is enough that i know no matter how i feel just like in those early days of covid where not only was uncertainty i just felt like i was stirring down a barrel of a gun in every way possible i knew that i can still do this and that i can i can get something out of it even if something small and it, it's yeah. it's Moving forward, it's it's uh it's punching off the ropes to use a boxing analogy, right? Like like Rocky Balboa, they're like, I can't believe he's getting up again. Jesus, yeah. <laughs> stay down, you idiot! <laughs> well, and it, get and, uh, out there with those secret friends. Get out there with those secret friends and do it. There you go. I, I, will, I will. I will. I will send this recording to all my collaborators. <laughs> See. <laughs> Derek Sally said so. Let the secret out of the bag. Let the secret out of the bag. Come on. We'll see you soon, Conan. All right, Jerry. Take care, man. Appreciate it. We're all Devo. So there you go. That happened. Uh, fucking Jerry Casali from Devo. <laughs> what a fucking... What a time to be alive, man. Uh... You know, if you came here for Devo specific content, there's two episodes and a something for everybody uh, a ten year episode that's all very much worth uh, checking out. And yeah, this is a weird episode for me. Sorry, I don't know what, what else to say. But I, I this is this. I thought it was very cool that he. Wanted to do that, and uh, I hope you guys got something out of it. Thanks for listening. And let's listen to... Oh, I know what we should listen to. We should listen to one of my favorite Everything is Fucked Up, but we're rocking through it anyway songs. This is a Beautiful World.
Place I come for that, but it's a uh, it's a great song nonetheless. Thanks so much for listening, everybody. Can you hear me now? This has been episode two fifty. Two fifty. Two fifty. Of good to Protonic Reversal. Thank you so much for listening to it. <sighs> this is Jerry Casali uh, of the legendary band Devo talking to my ass. <laughs> Life is strange. Life is beautiful. Life is sad. Life is hard. Life is confusing, but... I enjoy that. I hope you did too. Hey, hey! Name this song is in the radio. Really, don't say that very often. Name of this show is Coda Neutron's Protonic Reversal. The show happens Thursdays, eight Eastern, seven Central, six Mountain, five Pacific, on Radio Nope. Radio Nope.com. Say yes to Nope. Reversal.com for the archives, always free. No ads, no sponsors, no kidding. Anyone within the sound of my voice. Patreon.com slash Reversal if you want to support the show or get episodes of the show sooner. 50,000 watts of power. One dollar a month will get you. 250. Remember thinking 25 would be something to aspire to. <laughs> this microphone turns sound into electricity.
Tristan. Fuck it, let's keep going, huh? Thanks for listening, everybody. Can you hear me now? Stay safe out there. Out on Route 128, dark and lonely. I got my radio on. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? to my top 10. I'd like to thank our sponsor. But we haven't got a sponsor. Not if you were the last man on earth. She was prepared to prove it. This one goes out to a special girl. There is no special girl! It's the, it's the end of radio. The last announcer plays the last record. The last what? Leaves the transmitter. Circles the globe in search of a listener. Can you hear me now? broadcasting if there's no one there to receive it's the end of radio as we come to the close of our broadcast day. 